presence of man. Good morning and welcome to my father's place. Well, this isn't a Christmas message, but it's the message the Lord said, preach this, and so I'm going to. It is called Unfailing Fruit. Unfailing Fruit. Welcome to my father's place. We are going to talk about unfailing fruit today. And what the result is of having it. That's very important. Let me pray first. Father, there is nothing you desire more than to do what we ask you to do when we ask you. But you've shown me our hearts need to be right. We need to be in line with your will. So, Lord, I pray you would make it so through this message today. I pray hearts would be convicted, Lord Jesus, that we would stop looking at material blessings and we would look to you and obey what you say because the outcome is your unfailing fruit. Holy Spirit, have your way with this message. Take me where you need me to go. In Jesus' name, amen. It is very true, especially at this time of year, but pretty much always in the church, I am sorry to say that the focus is on material blessing. And we say, look at how good God is. He gave me a car, or he gave me a house, or he gave me a ring. We miss it. We really do. God wants to bring that to our attention today through John 15. Now, we have spoken about what makes God dance, spin, what makes him laugh, what makes him rejoice, what makes him sing from Zephaniah 3.17. We have talked about that it is us fully submitting and humbling ourselves before him so that we indeed may be seated with him in the heavenly places so that we indeed may do the works that he's prepared in advance for us to do. These are things I've spoken of over the last few messages. And this completely dovetails, thank you, Dove Holy Spirit, into this message It completely dovetails into it. See, he rejoices when we are doing his will, which is for us to be lights in the darkness, which is for us to be, as I spoke of in Isaiah 60, the light shining from us, the radiance of our shining, the light that leads the nations, those who don't know Jesus, to him. In us, that light and that radiance and shining coming from us. So even leaders, kings come to the brightness of our rising, to the radiance of our shining. So how does John 15 play into this? Isn't it about the vine and the branches? Well, we're going to go right to verse 16 and talk about that. And I'll backtrack a little bit. But he wants me to go right here because this is what he wants to get at. Verse 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit and that your fruit would remain so that whatever you ask of the father in my name, he may give to you. And I'm going to take this apart for you according to the Lord. He chose you. Making a decision for Christ, I'm sorry that's not how it works. He makes the decision for you and you have a choice of either to accept his outstretched hand or reject it. You did not choose him. He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And what did he choose us for? To ask him for material blessings? 
No. He appointed us, he ordained us, and he planted us in the place that we are. That we would go. Not sit, but go. And bear fruit. That is, bring forth fruit. That is something that cannot come from outside of you, but from within you. It's like a tree, an apple tree is going to bear apples. If you're a Jesus tree or a Jesus vine, you're going to bear Jesus. Bear fruit. And it's going to come from inside you, just like it has to come from inside a tree or a vine. So that fruit is going to come from in you. And when the father sees it, that's when he begins dancing and spinning and laughing and rejoicing. Because he says, ah, he says, one who is ready to go forth and put forth from inside them my fruit. Thus he is glorified. Verse 8, my father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. It is by the bearing of this fruit that is not us. It comes from Jesus. It comes from within. It cannot be people because of the way this is worded. This is not the number of notches on your belt of people who have been saved through you, but it is what he has done inside you. That is your fruit that you bring forth, that you bear. And that makes you a vessel for his purposes. That makes you a fruit bearer. Now you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit and that that fruit would remain. This isn't fruit that's going to dry up. This isn't fruit that's going to rot. It isn't even going to fall off the tree because that is surely what will happen. It is not fruit that fails. It is fruit that is unfailing, unfailing fruit. It will always, you will always bring it forth from within you if you obey his commands. He says, if you obey my commands, then you are my friends. In 14, and if you do not obey him in these commands, what are the commands? Stay, wait, I will fill you with my love so you can love the same way I love. That you love one another, verse 12, just as I have loved you. That is the fruit. And that fruit, the fruit of God's love and of his joy and of his peace, not yours, his and all the rest of the fruit of the spirit that is the fruit that we bear, and it never fails. Never. Isn't that glorious that once you are full of him, and when you have stayed and waited, and the father is just rejoicing because he knows he has a fruit bearer, then you are in position for him to use. If you do it, he will do his part. If you ask him, he will fill you with his spirit. And you will be equipped, prepared, and you will have fruit that you will bear. And it will be food for others. If you go back to Ezekiel 47, in the 12th verse, by the river, on its banks... Actually, these are two rivers for those who uh, know their scripture. But I'll read it this way. By the river on its banks, on one side and on the other, will grow all kinds of trees for food, spiritual food. 
Their leaves will not wither and their fruit will not fail. They will bear every month because their water flows from the sanctuary and their fruit will be for food and their leaves will be for healing. I tell you, the father will use you to do the God works that he has prepared in advance for you to do when you obey Jesus and stay and wait and are filled and prepared. He starts to rejoice because he knows he has a, has a fruit bearer. He knows he has a fruit bearer and your fruit will remain. It will be continual. And what you give forth by the Holy Spirit fully indwelling you will be for healing and for spiritual food. Go and bear fruit that your fruit would remain. You see, if you don't have fruit that remains, if you don't have fruit that comes from within you, if you don't have unfailing fruit, then it is not possible for you to do what comes next. But if you allow God to do it, if you ask him, if you say, fill me with your spirit, I am staying and waiting as you command, Lord Jesus. Look at what happens. That your fruit would remain, verse 16 of John 15, so that... Whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give to you. Whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give to you. In my name, in my character, having my character now in you because you're full of me. In my name. Whatever you come before the very throne room, you are in the throne room, seated in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Whatever you stand before him and ask for, with him filling you, will be according to the Father's will, and he will do it. Everything that you ask, not my will, but thine be done. I have come to do your will, O oh God. Your law is written in my heart. That happens when we're filled with God. I know what I was like as a Christian before I was filled with God, and I know what I am like now, and it is different. And my only desire, really and truly, my only desire is to have a front row seat to watch him work the works that he's prepared in advance for me to do. And that is the blessing. Not cars and houses and whatever. It's just to be there to see him work is the most amazing thing, the most satisfying to your soul. Because you are totally his and you are bearing his fruit. And that indeed will lead to others being drawn. The light, the radiance, the shining, proclaiming the truth, the gospel, setting captives free, announcing that there is a judgment to come. Fruit for spiritual food for other people. Leaves for healing. This is what he wants to bring each Christian to beyond salvation. He wants to save you to the uttermost, to give you something that will, inside of you that will make you a fruit bearer for him and he will rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, and so will you. Continually rejoicing because you know you are now in a position that when you ask for something, it's going to be according to God's will and it's going to be something spiritual. Not natural, not material. He'll take care of those things, but seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. 
And all these things will be added to you. He wants today for you to know the greatest gift that you can give him, as I spoke last week and as I speak again today, is to become a fruit bearer for him. Fruit that never fails. Fruit that is his fruit. Fruit that will cause others to be drawn to him. When we talk about fruit, we're talking about that. Certainly, that will lead to salvation. But when we're talking about fruit, not notches on your belt. For all the people you've saved. You haven't saved them anyway. He does. But it's him and you. And it draws people. And his love flows from you for people. No matter what they do to you. No matter if they spitefully use you. It isn't hard. You don't even give a second thought to praying for them. Pray for those who spitefully use you. Pray for your enemies. That's not hard to do when his love is in your heart because I tell you, he prayed for you. In God's way of praying, his eye was on you and his hand was on you. You pray. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still hostile toward God, Christ, his son, he sent at great cost to him, beyond what we can think or imagine. He makes it easy to do the Sermon on the Mount because he's in you. He's the author of that. Allow him Ask him, confess to him even now that you're really not bearing his fruit. Your love is natural and fickle. Your patience is short. Your joy is temporary. Your peace. Most Christians don't even have peace. They are still young in the spirit though they may be in the church 40 years. And he wants to bring you to this place where he can rejoice. And it is a command that you go to that place because you cannot do a thing apart from him. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Verse 5 of John 15, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me remains in me, and I in him. He bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. He bears, he brings forth much fruit because he is in us, large and in charge. He just spoke about that in John 14. This is a continuation. And so what he wants you to do today is confess that you're not bearing his fruit. Because certainly if you confess it, and you ask him to do what only he can do, certainly if you will obey his command to stay and wait, you will be rewarded. He rewards those who diligently seek him. And then you will be one over whom he dances and rejoices and laughs for joy. This is the gift that you can give. This unfailing fruit because it's his. It will never fail. Then whatever you ask, he will do because you will be asking it in the character of Christ, having become a partaker of his divine nature. There is no greater blessing than to be a part of his plan with him fully indwelling you. Your desires and requests to him will change entirely to see the world around you through the eyes of Jesus and to pray for the same kinds of things to happen 
as happened when he walked the earth, and even greater things. His unfailing fruit he is glad to give you if you will confess that yours fails. It is your decision. Go to him now. And in the meantime, these are for healing. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus that whatever kind of healing you need, spiritual or physical, right now, that his power would go forth through this message. Father, heal those who are watching and listening, Lord. Heal them by your power. Let this fruit be evident that you may be glorified, that I may prove to be your disciple. I am asking in the character of Jesus, possessing his divine nature. Let it be done, Lord Jesus, in your name. Amen.